Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. So today we are going to discuss a case of hanging. Uh, we, go, we, we received an ambulance call saying that a patient of hanging was found in his home. Okay. And uh, the ambulance was uh, sent for the patient to get to the air. So we prepared the air with concerns about the hanging. When we set up the airway track for securing the airway mm -hmm. and the uh, C collar ready to immobilize the spine. Okay, that should go with the ambulance. Uh, uh, Okay. Not in the ear. Yeah, that should go with the ambulance. Yes. Hmm. So we received the uh, patient to the ear. On arrival, uh, first uh, the initial uh, assessment, primary assessment, okay. airway. The patient had, uh, was applied C, uh, C collar was applied to the patient, and uh, there was uh, agonal uh, gasping breaths by the patient. So immediately airway management as uh, rapid intubation was. You are uh, telling that agonal gas. Agonal gasp means what? Uh, sudden forceful breathing like it breaks, like not continuous breathing. What should be the first step that you should do when you are seeing an agonal gasp? Secure the area. No, for that you should check for the pulse. Okay. That is the first thing that you should do. Check for the pulse. Agonal gasp can be part of your cardiac arrest. Even if there is a pulse is not there, they can have agonal gas. So whenever you see agonal gas, that's an improper breathing part. Right. You have to immediately check for the pulse. That is the first thing that you should do. So check for the pulse. If there is pulse, okay, you can do go for the airway management. If there is no pulse, you have to immediately start CPR. So agonal gas is, whenever you see agonal gas, use the terminology improper breathing or agonal gas. The next thing to go for the pulse check. Okay. So here, here pulse check, pulse what is the challenge? Present. Pulse check challenge is the carotid, uh, the neck area is strangled. So, uh, not neck area strangled, you are already applied a cervical, cervical collar. collar. So, cervical collar, it might be sometime difficult. But when you see a cervical collar, you see always an opening in the front. That is basically for your surgical airway. If you want to do a surgical airway, you can do a surgical airway manipulation through the opening. Also, you can insert two fingers and you can check for the pulse also. So, the most important message that I want to tell you is that don't remove or haphazardly remove the cervical collar for checking pulse or any of this activity. That is what will happen because already there is a higher risk of a cervical spine injury. So, don't remove the cervical uh, collar. If you want to remove the cervical collar, do manual inline stabilization and make sure that somebody is stabilizing the spine, then you remove the cervical collar for all your assessment. So that is very important that you need to look in for. Okay. So this patient, so patient had a pulse. pulse. Patient had pulse. Okay. Uh, so we proceeded with the uh, airway, securing the airway with the help of uh, intubation. Okay. So during the intubation, the challenge would be here is uh, maintaining the inline stabilization. So one, uh, apart from the regular intubation, here we require an extra person who is constantly providing the inline stabilization. Either we can, he can be at the same at the head end and lower side, lower to the head so that we can other person can be intubating, or he can stand in the opposite was it uh, uh, like towards the foot end, catching both the ears and uh, stabilizing it. Okay. So the first step that you will be doing will be in assigning a patient and uh, a person yes, and he will be coming behind you or from the front, he will be doing an inline stabilization. Ideally from behind will be better. So once the inline stabilization is in place, then you can remove the front, front part of it. Is. So uh, when you are intubating, what are the concerns that you want to do? What are the things that you wanted to avoid? First thing is the posterior subluxation of the... Sub what are things that you wanted to avoid? Avoid means basic airway management. What are the things that you will do in basic airway management? One is head tilt, he uh, chin, chin lift, lift and jaw thrust. These, these are the three manoeuvres. So which one you wanted to avoid here? Head it head should tilt. head tilt should be avoided. Head. There should not be... That is similar to a trauma patient. You should not be doing a head tilt manoeuvre. You can do a chin lift and... While intubating, the problem is that no, when manual. we are intubating, we will be, we'll be hyperextending sometimes. That should be avoided. So, when you have manual inline stabilization in place, you can intubate uh, with that with uh, with their support. And best ideal will be what for intubating such patients? Video, video, video laryngoscopy or fibro optic fibro intubation. Yeah. So, that will be ideal for this group of patients. So, because of this, because we don't want to hyperextend the neck and visualization will be sometime an issue. If the co uh, cords are pretty anterior, you need to do some amount of manipulation. So, those things will be difficult when you have a trauma patient or like a cervical spine injury, suspicious patients like this. So, that part you have to be extra cautious. So, in this patient, 
डेफिनेटली यू कैन गो फॉर अ मैनुअल इनलाइन स्टेबलाइजेशन एंड विद द हेल्प ऑफ रूटीन लैरिंगोस्कोप एंड यू कैन गो हेड एंड इंडिबेट एंड वॉट आर दी अदर चैलेंजेस दैट यू शुड कीप कंसिडर इन यूर माइंड the other cha- in this uh, we need to consider that the trachea which is there which might be uh, like strangulated or there can be a tracheal injury okay there can be a tracheal injury or even sometimes a vocal cord edema also can be there and the tissues can be crumpled so the pathway the air uh, when the vision can be a issue it will not so be so you will be able to see but the problem is there can be lot of edema so the size of et tube that you are going to select should be ideally one size smaller so if you want like 8 8.5 for an adult male patient here maybe you need to choose like a 7.5 because there can be here to anticipate these things so that's what i some every patient might not require this suppose you are trying to insert an 8.5 that might not go in so you always keep to make sure that your size that is always true for all your intubations you have to keep one size below always keep ready because of the vocal cord edema you might not be able to intubate that fine that apart from that uh, we need to anticipate a failed intubation algorithm and uh, okay so we can steps. have can't intubate but can ventilate can. Uh-huh. we can have can intubate and can ventilate both of these things can be there both can't then you can need to go for so surgical airway. airway that you are not able to ventilate not able to intubate you need to go ahead for the surgical airway so when will you say that this is uh, airway attempt is a failure first we uh, try how many attempts that you wanted to do two attempts of intubation by an by an expert by a trained person, trained person. so that is very very important it is not by an junior person true attempts by a fa- uh, trained person if it is failed then you can go for the next step yes. so supraglottic airway device again it might be a challenge in this patient if there is vocal cord edema and all uh, airway how much it is going to ventilate and all it might be an issue so th- there is intubating lma that is what, what is available now even with any help of an intubating lma also it might be difficult to uh, do in this situation but routinely you can go ahead with an lma intubating lma and all you can use uh, the most important thing what you need to your surgical airway kit should be ready so what are the different surgical uh, airway measures that you can do because again this is a challenge if the knot was in the front there can be a tracheal injury directly also so where to put the incision and all might be a big challenge for you so uh, the routine areas where you dust for the near the cricothyroid okay. membrane maybe already if it is damaged maybe you need to go little bit below for uh, you making your incision and all so even surgical airway can be a challenge in this patient and also patient with neck injuries penetrating neck injuries and all it can be a challenge so if you are able to intubate well and good but always anticipate these issues best will be a fiber optic guided uh, bronchoscopy yeah. guided intubation so we can know assess the situation and we can pass the fiber optic scope and we can see the tracheal rings whether there is any injury or not then we can safely pass so that will be ideal but if it fails you have to have go for the other option surgical airway either with a jet ventilation to start off with followed by converting into a cricothyroidotomy and for finally a tracheostomy or even a percutaneous what or is available you can go and do it Okay, that is regarding your airway yeah. with cervical spine stabilization. In this patient, we could have secured with the endotracheal tube of size seven uh, in the first attempt. Next, we have seen the breathing. In mm. the, as the patient was already intubated, we have put him on the ventilator, and uh, breathing was managed. Regarding the circulation, breathing. What are the anticipated problems that you need to consider? Breathing. We need to see if there is bilateral air entry. Okay. apart from that uh, we can expect uh, uh, complications of hanging such as pulmonary edema what pulmonary edema it is there can be neurogenic pulmonary edema apart from that because during the uh, choking of that uh, there can be high intrathoracic pressures and when the choking is left because of the release in the intrathoracic pressure sudden acute pulmonary edema can also be result just like you see in no where else you can see the same expansion okay where else you can see the same thing decompression sickness decompression oh, yeah. sickness also you can have similar sure. picture because sudden change in the intrathoracic pressure sure. also you can have similar picture and but chances of barrel trauma is unlikely but you can have the sudden re expansion and leading to pulmonary edema yeah. so how will you tackle that we will require positive ventilation pressures during like just like any pulmonary edema positive ventilation pressure and removing the fluid overload with furosemide okay okay fine then uh, hypotension management uh, with the help of your uh, either 
एन टी जी और यू हैव टू गो हेड विद लेबिट्रोल इट हेयर द पेशेंट रिगार्डिंग द पल्स वॉज पैल्पेबल एंड सिस्टोलिक पैल्पेट्री बी पी वॉज एटी एटी एंड विन ऑस्कल्टेट्री मेथड वी आर गेटिंग नाइन्टी एंड डायस्टोलिक वॉज एंड पैल्पेबल सो पेरीफेरल वर वेरी कोल्ड ओके सो वॉट यू डिट फॉर दैट वी कंसिडरिंग द पेशेंट वॉज इन हाइपर टेंशन हेयर वी पुट टू लार्ज ग्रीन कैनलर्स आई वी कैनलर्स टूक द ब्लैक सैम्पल एंड फर्स्ट वी हैड गिवन वन पॉइंट बोलस ऑफ फ्लूड्स वॉज इनिशियट ओके and after reassessing the bp as the bp wasn't picking up we had to start with the inotropic supports of noradrenaline inotrop noradrenaline is sir what is noradrenaline it is a vasopressor it's a vasopressor you have to use the terminology correctly vasopressor and inotrop what are the difference inotrop would be having increased cardio output whichever the drug that is increase the contractility of the heart you can call it as an inotrop so what is an inotropic agent that we commonly use in the ed Dob- dobutamine dobutamine is an like milrinone enamprinone levosimentan these are all classical inotrope adrenaline dopamine they all have inotropic actions depend upon dose dependent effects so if you are starting like 10 micrograms it will have more in the where will be the action of dopamine vasodilation where where will be the action for dopamine if you want to start for a septic shock what will be the dose that you want to start 10 microgram right. if you go up on that it will have more of inotropic effect also if you like 5 micrograms and all it will have just action on the renal vasculature that's it so depending upon that adrenaline has got both alpha beta everything is available so it has got action on your blood vessel peripheral blood vessel it has action on your heart it has got inotropy as well as vasopressor effect noradrenaline is a preferably it more acts on the your peripheral alpha receptors in the blood vessel where it will helps in vasoconstriction thereby increasing the venous return so that is how noradrenaline act so when you look into the management of hypotension whenever whichever type of hypotension the preferred agent of choice is now which is noradrenaline to start off with then further you can add on dopamine and all other agents depending upon the requirement dobutamine and other agent depending upon your cardiac contractility so what will happen if you straight away start dobutamine Uh, for this patient if you think that it is cardiogenic you think it is a cardiogenic shock because you have to think it is a cardiogenic shock see there is no fluid loss there is no hemorrhagic shock there is nothing mm-hmm. it is directly post hanging he has come with it can be a cardiogenic shock or it can be a sudden vasopressor uh, sorry vagal response just because of the vagal direct pressure of the vagal there can be significant bradycardia and hypotension because of that so uh, do, we wanted to start dobutamine whether you will start dobutamine or not dobutamine uh, right now it was supposed to be started if systolic blood pressure yeah. is more than 100 then only why because it has vasodilatory effects initially which so it has got it has got inotropic effect as well as it has got alpha receptor action also so when you give dobutamine what will happen it will have predominant alpha action initially so suddenly there will be decrease in the venous return and further worsening of hypotension can occur so that is why we offer we say that after 90 blood pressure 90 systolic blood pressure if at all if it is a cardiogenic shock so cardiogenic shock management will be bp less than 90 bp above 90 or bp with hypertension cardiogenic shock they can even have hyper, they, sometimes you will start noradrenaline dobutamine and some dose of ntg also to increase the venodilatation and all so if at all that happens if the bp is less than 90 you start noradrenaline build up the blood pressure then you add dobutamine so that is the reason why we are saying so if you start straight away dobutamine the patient's blood pressure will drop further okay so here we started with noradrenaline initially okay so it's a vasopressor so because of the inotrope i came start discussing this one so basically you have to use when are you using noradrenaline it is vasopressor agent uh, after the after the circulation part here the blood analysis was taken and even ebg was sent next coming to disability part patient's gcs was e1 v1 m4 okay what could be the reason for this the reasons could be that uh, during as this is the case of hanging the patient would have developed certain amount of hypoxia causing the ischemia to the brain and causing the reduced gcs okay apart from that uh, other pro- d- differential diagnosis would be post hanging seizure episode causing him to be in post ictal state and uh, circulatory collapse causing shock and reduced uh, gcs GCS. so that hypotension itself can be the cause for his low gcs because of the uh, decrease in the cerebral perfusion that itself can attribute to this uh, situation present situation whatever you are saying a post ictal and there can be always you have to consider co-ingestion co-ingestion what is the most common co-ingestion 
alcohol alcohol or he cannot consume okay. anything so any any of the agents he can consume so always consider a co injection in any of this sort of patients okay in this patient uh, as this patient uh, gcs uh, already the patient was intubated here no any active intervention next coming to the exposure patient's temperature was 98.2 fahrenheit and grbs was 150 mg per dl okay Uh, coming to the adjuncts to the primary survey, patients uh, ABG, the arterial blood gas analysis which was taken was showing uh, type 2 respiratory failure along with uh, uh, lactate of uh, 10.1. So 10.1 lactate uh, gives you what idea? It might be because of the hypoperfusion circulation. Hypoperfusion. Or seizure. Or it can be a seizure, seizure or it can be due to a drug overdose. We have to consider, we have a multiple consideration. Seizure. With the background of hypotension, we can call, can be due to hypotension or whether it is a post uh, seizure yeah. sequelae that has lead to hypotension also is a possibility. So we don't know exactly what happened. So all these together, there is some hyperlactemia leading to lactic acidosis. Also the respiratory failure, respiratory... The respiratory failure respiratory. we are expecting because post seizure that also can be expected. Post seizure they can have for type 2 respiratory failure. Okay. And uh, other uh, adjuncts to the airway, we had taken an uh, uh, ECG. ECG okay. was showing normal sinus rhythm of 73 beats per minute. And apart from that, uh, as this patient is a cervical injury, we are suspecting we need to take a imaging of choice. Right now, imaging of choice, we are planning to take a CT, brain with CT spine. Okay. CT, C-spine. 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 So, cervical spine. Cervical spine. What about X-rays? Uh, X-rays, uh, uh, like in radio imaging, right now, Uh, CT is uh, because we can have better prognosis. No, that is not the reason. Why we are avoiding X-ray is only because this is definitely a suspecting a cervical spine injury. Okay. So, what will happen in the X-ray room? What is an ideal cervical spine X-ray? You have to have a comment. Okay, this is a very good cervical spine X-ray. What how what should be the view that you should have? We should be able to see from C1 junction till C7 T1 junction. You have to able to see on the X-ray. Just imagine with the cervical collar, maximum you will be able to see till C5, maybe C6, well, that is the best that you will be able to see. And another thing what you will do is that you will remove the cervical collar in the x-ray room. And if you remove the x-ray collar, you are causing more damage to the patient by shifting this thing, moving and all. There is more injury that is you are going to develop due to the removal of cervical collar. Collar. So, we want to avoid that. Definitely, we are thinking that there is a cervical spine injury. That is why even when you look into the ATLS format, previously there was a C-spine X-ray, was a routine X-ray as a part of your trauma series X-ray. Now, since last update, there is no trauma series X-ray for cervical spine. Either chest X-ray or pelvic X-ray. That is only required. So, if you have doubt in your mind, go for an other modality of an investigation like either a CT or an MRI, depending upon the need. Uh, CT might be uh, the best investigation in this patient because we are considering, we are looking in terms of more of a fracture and all those things. So, CT will be ideal. Yes, and uh, if you don't see any CT findings, uh, positive finding, but the patient still have weakness, then at that time, you have to look in for an MRI. Uh, the CT What are the suspected injuries that you can have in yeah. this patient? Uh, we we are expecting cervical injuries here yeah. in this patient uh, we can suspect c2 fracture c2 cervical spine which is usually the most common fracture in the cervical spines during, during hanging apart from that sub cervical spine c3 to c7 also we can expect but if you are suspecting c2 c3 c4 c5 above c5 if any cervical injury is there we need to take uh, we need to consider that there can be phrenic nerve injury, injury yes. if phrenic nerve is injured again the respiratory drive compromise uh, will be there. Uh, here in the CT, we had uh, got the report there was no any fracture or dislocation, no spinal canal narrowing or no adjacent soft tissue swelling. Okay, okay. The CT, uh, the C-spine part has Whether been... Whether this patient has hanged or not? Coming question. to the second. Yeah, <laughs> that we have to go. Because obviously, definitely you should have some amount of edema or something you are able to see. Uh, if the patient was just trying to scare the people or he has just hanged, we have to see from the history part. Regarding the secondary survey. What are the named fractures? Can you just few cervical spine injury? C1 uh, is called as the hangman's fracture. C1 is called the Jefferson's, Jefferson's fracture. fracture. And C2 is the hangman's mm. fracture. In Jefferson's fracture, the axial, axial of the vertebrae, mm. there can be multiple axial multiple fractures. Axial. In C2, uh, the... Uh, there can be uh, type 1, type 2, type 3. In type 1, the dense uh, fracture. fracture will be there. Type 2, the... Uh, 
the pegging part of the the peg part of the also will be displaced then type 3 it is a fracture and will be passing into the c1 vertebrae c1 vertebrae so, so type 1 and type 3 we can uh, place the heart collar but type 2 we need to confirm if there uh, for a surgical fixation would be the management look quite, look quite. Of okay so these are the named fracture for the sake of uh, hangman's fracture why because it's seen in patient who's hanged. Uh, judicially hanged usually the c2 fracture will be will seen. be seen so that is the reason why it is called as hangman's fracture okay so what happened to him the patient. so ct brain and ct spine was normal. normal so right now we had a patient who had presented with you with the history of hanging on arrival he had some agonal gap there was a palpable pulse so we went with the airway stabilization with cervical spine immobilization we went ahead with the endotracheal intubation and after that you found out that its uh, blood pressure was on the lower side you went ahead with fluid bolus still the blood pressure didn't improve so you started on a vasopressor support looking for a target map of above 65 and you have went ahead with your secondary evaluation. Uh, in the secondary evaluation, the patient is uh, working as a fisherman. He was brought to the ER by family with allergic history of self farm no? and uh, they are suspected uh, he was uh, after getting drunk the patient uh, the subject had come to the home and uh, threatened to get uh, He's going to suicide. suiciding and he went to inside the room and he had hanged himself but as the bystanders were immediately adjacent they broke open the door immediately and before he even uh, threw the stool they had caught him okay so that is the reason why he survived there has been uh, uh, on examination there has been a partial hanging mark it okay. is not a complete hanging because the patient did not uh, exert the whole weight of his body so we can classify it as partial hanging okay and uh, regarding uh, co-ingestions as they gave the history of alcohol and we need to expect if there are any other co-ingestions. Co so, we have to send for toxicology, toxicology screen. screen. Fine. So, he was admitted to the ICU. And he was uh, admitted to the ICU and he had been under observation until the patient was improved. On okay. the second day, the patient's uh, respiratory parameters were fine. But so, we had planned for the extubation. Okay. So, he improved. He came back to full sensorium. So, uh, what could have been the event that has led to his agonal gasp? Can just maybe what what I feel is that maybe there was a direct carotid compression. There can be an uh, suppression of the vagal stimulation, and uh, due to that he would have gone for an hypotension, and as a result he was going for an impending <coughs> cardiac arrest. So meanwhile you got in and you secured the airway and uh, you went ahead and uh, resuscitated him. That's why if you would have delayed that he would have gone into a cardiac arrest. So that might would have saved him. So, he is fully conscious oriented otherwise he is discharged also I think. Okay. Apart from that like in such uh, cases we discussing about this case like we can say this is a blunt neck trauma mm -hmm. in that the options for securing airway apart from the only the intubation we can try awake percutaneous cricothyroid puncture if the, there is a complete uh, blunt trauma and we cannot uh, try for ET tube. Why you want to do awake? Uh, so that we can uh, assess the patient. So even whatever airway patency is there, you don't want to diminish it by giving a sedative agent. So yes. that is the reason. And also if there is a CO2 build up during the time, it will be uh, stimulating the patient, patient. rather oh. than paralyzing, paralyzing the, patient. the patient. And the other thing would be awake direct laryngoscopy after topi uh, uh, topical, anesthetics. topical anesthesia. Awake fibro That will be the best option. In this <laughs> During the fibro optic intubation, the advantage would be we will be passing the bronchoscope due, through the trachea. So, if there is any uh, damage to the trachea anywhere, we can uh, overcome that and place the ET tube rather than just placing in the top part of it till the carina. Okay. And uh, regarding the... Any role of steroids? If uh, considering spinal injury, there we have the role of steroids. Previously, there were studies, but no. Mm. So, NASA's go, one trial, NASA's two yeah, trial. NASA's two, NASA's two trial is what uh, it was showing. One there was some one gram that medial prednisolone dose was found to be effective. But there are trials that, that it's not effective also. But we don't have any other option. So, whatever edema is there, it might help. Maybe a simple uh, edema and all that is causing the compression, the steroids might help. So, that is a NASA's two trial. And uh, as this is a cervical fracture, there is a scoring system, mm. SIL scoring system, subaxial cervical spine injury scoring system. Here, depending upon the fracture's morphology, disc 
uh, ligament is complex the, comp uh, the ligaments if they are intact or indeterminate or disrupted and neurological status of the patient will divide into 10 point system if the <coughs> score is 1 2 3 non surgical management is justified if it is more than 5 then surgical treatment is required but in this cervical, cervical spine injury this, so this holds good for all your trauma cervical trauma and regarding prognosis of a patient of hanging, GCS is not at all a predictor of the prognosis. The predictors of prognosis would be if there is a brain injury in the CT or if there is a long hanging time or if the patient went into cardiac arrest and on a CPR he was uh, revived. revived or if there is a spiravical spine injury and hypotension and arrival. These things will determine the prognosis, prognosis of, of the patient. So here. Uh, there was no any of these things, so that's why hypotension to and maybe a transient one, maybe you would have uh, resuscitated by this time. He survived and he went home uh, with a full GCS. Yes. And he had come for review today. <laughs> okay, fine. Thank you.